Hello everyone and welcome to the show. In this episode, I'm going to be interviewing Varun Goel, an independent developer out of Chicago. And we're going to find out how he came up with the idea for his latest app, PhrasePop, how he's been marketing it, and his recent successes. I hope you enjoy this interview. Hi Varun, thanks for uh, taking the time out to speak with us about your app. Yeah, no problem. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you got the idea for PhrasePop? Yes. So I've always wanted to develop uh, an iPhone app for a few years now. I've, um, and I uh, took the idea from PhrasePop from a, a popular phrase, uh, which is called, that's what she said. Mm-hmm. And there's a, a bunch of uh, apps which were already uh, around based on, based on that same idea. But I wanted to... Uh, uh, I wanted to expand on that and really take it to the next level. So the inspiration really comes from the the phrase, that's what she said, which originally comes from the NBC show, The Office, uh-huh. which I'm a great fan of. <laughs> and I wanted to uh, really, you know, take it to the next level. And, you know, that's where I got the idea from. Um, you know, I wanted to keep it simple. So, um, yeah, really, that's where I got it from. Oh, okay, cool. Um, did you code the app yourself or did you outsource it? I coded the app myself. Oh, nice. Okay, so what was the hard part about the hardest part about creating the app? So uh, originally, I thought the development would be the hardest part, but mm-hmm. uh, but what I uh, what I realized later, one, now that I've created the app, was that deciding on a design was really the hardest part for this app. Uh, I, I designed the app myself, and I kind of just you know. Uh, gave the app to a few of my friends to kind of test it out and beta test it. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of options I had as to where, in which direction I could take the, the design of this app. So that was really the hardest part for me in deciding what, 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 how to design it. Uh, I see. So you're talking in terms of um, just the overall aesthetic maybe or just the flow of the program? Yeah, I think aesthetic and just like, you know, the look and feel Mm -hmm. because uh, this app was more of like, you know, it's like a niche app. It's more of an entertainment type app. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, the design has has a lot to do with it. Uh, So, uh, yeah, there was, you know, many ways I could present the data and present how the user would interact with it. Uh But at the end, you know, just I had to go with the simplest version of it. And that was, you know, that took a lot of time. Uh, I see. And was yeah. that was that simplest version based on the input from your users, or was it just kind of what you thought was best based on what you thought and what your users thought, or how did that work? Yeah, that was I think you know ba- that, it was it was based on what I thought and with the you know taking in taking in the inputs of everyone who used my app and mm-hmm. you know and uh, what they felt about it. So uh, so yeah, definitely, I would not have come to that conclusion if I didn't share this with you know my friends and family and ask for feedback. Uh huh. Okay, that's a good point. Um, so, what's the hardest part been about marketing the app? So you know, I I think spending mon- money on marketing, uh, there there was no easy way. To, like I could spend money on marketing the app, but since I'm like you know a small developer, I'm an indie developer. Mm-hmm. Marketing is expensive, mm-hmm. and I. I used a little bit of Facebook marketing, but I didn't really feel confident or comfortable uh, spending that money on Facebook because I wasn't sure, I wasn't able to really track the success of my marketing campaign. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, just from, uh, that's when I started reading about, you know, marketing versus app store optimization. And I came across a lot of articles which, you know, which suggested, or which, you know, which said like, they had the experience where, you know, some going around like rather focus my energy on app store optimization because that's uh, that's more sustainable in the long run. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whereas marketing, I can you know spend like a thousand dollars and uh, create a marketing uh, you know campaign for the month of August. But you know once that marketing campaign gets over, you know the downloads are going to slowly fall down by itself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So so yeah, really you know it was you know since I was just a one man team. Uh, I wanted to focus on, you know, development and designing and all of that. So, you know, I really did not spend a lot of money mm-hmm. on marketing and I kind of just let that be. Oh, that's a great point. Yeah. yeah. It's really a, a lot cheaper and probably more sustainable, like you say, to to work on the keywords first. Um, can you share exactly. us share with us your biggest success so far? So is this with Phrase Pop or just generally? Uh, you know? just, in, just in general. 
just in general. So uh, I would say, you know, Phrase Pop is one is one of my biggest successes. Mm-hmm. I would say it's more of a personal success for me because I've been uh, wanting, you know, I have this entrepreneurial spirit and I want to kind of, I've always wanted to develop apps ever since I was in school. Mm-hmm. So I was really excited to have my own, very own app on the App Store. Cool. Uh, besides that, I think, you know, my success with App Store optimization so far has been really rewarding. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah. Cool. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you've been using Sensor Tower to uh, improve your downloads? Yes. So I've, I've mainly used uh, Sensor Tower to to research on my keywords to get basically, you know, higher higher traffic keywords with uh, low competition. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that Sensor Tower has helped me greatly to, you know, use to identify keywords which which have that which have those two characteristics and which are also relevant to my app. Mm-hmm. I've been using uh, you know I've been uh, reading I've been reading thoroughly reading the Sensor Tower blog as well, which mm-hmm. has a lot of lot of great insight on the business aspect of your app as well as the marketing aspect of your app. Mm-hmm. And um, you know I've had I've had great results with Sensor Tower so far. Ah, cool. Can you yeah. share with us um, how it's been able to improve your downloads? Yes, definitely. So currently, as of this morning, uh, downloads have increased, uh, you know, one forty three percent. Wow, nice. So in the last, yeah. So since my last update, which has the keyword optimizations in there, downloads have increased one forty three percent over the last three weeks, mm-hmm. and then revenue actually has increased by two hundred eighty five percent. Wow, Congra- congratulations! Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, so. Besides the keywords, are there other app store optimizations that you've tried that um, have worked for you, or have you have you tried anything else? I haven't tried anything else so far. I think the next target for me is going to be localization. Oh, okay. Currently, I'm focused. I, you know, I have my keywords just for US. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, all the research I've done is just focused on the US market, and that also shows. Uh, uh, you know, if I look at the downloads split by country, I also have a significant portion of uh, my downloads all in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So I really want to focus on countries outside the U.S. and uh, do localization where I feel I can, I have a bigger market I can tap into. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, that should, hopefully that that works. Um, yeah. Besides the Facebook ads, have you done any other type of promotion? Like, um, I don't know, contacting people to review your app or anything like that, press releases? Um, yes. So, you know, besides the Facebook app and I've, uh, I have contacted a ton of websites for mm-hmm. reviewing my app, but with, uh, really no success. Uh, okay. A couple of them did get back to me, you know, wanted to, uh, wanted to do a paid review with me, but I didn't feel comfortable doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I felt like they should really review my app for, you know, if it, it didn't, it didn't basically like they, they have a different school of thought where, you know, they get so many reviews every day that they would they would only take the ones which actually pay them. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so, uh, so instead of that, so since that was really not you know that was not my first go to option, I have obviously created like a Facebook and Facebook page and a Twitter handle for Phrase Pop. Mm-hmm. So you know, I occasionally like uh, I occasionally kind of you know go on those accounts and kind of generate content. But it's a lot of work to do because it's, you know, again, I'm a one-man team. Mm-hmm. So what I've been doing is, uh, you know, blogging about my experiences developing the app mm-hmm. on on a, on a decently popular blog in Chicago where it's it's called builtinchicago.org. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's an open community. Anyone can post, you know, you just, you, you just, you just be a member. So I've been doing that. And then, um, so I think that's been, that's helped generate some uh, some visibility into my app. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's really it, you know. That's really it. That's okay, great. That's really interesting to hear about. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it is pretty tough to get people review review your app from what I hear. Um, yep. What are your future goals in app development? So um, I want to, you know, I want to really understand and how how to how to tackle localization of mm-hmm. keywords. I think that's a really big aspect. You know, the more and more I think about it, like you know. I'm create, I'm trying to create an app for everyone around the world, not just the U.S. market. So that's very important, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So going forward, I'm going to look a lot more. I'm going to research and spend more time on keywords and localization. Before, mm-hmm. uh, I am actually working on another app right now, um, uh, which you know, which 
which I, yeah, we, we, we took part in a hackathon of last month and we ended up placing second. So we're going to go through and actually finish this app and release it mm-hmm. in the next month or so. Cool. Yeah. So just create more apps. You know, I'm really, really excited about the mobile space in general. So, mm-hmm. yes. Is there anything you can tell us about your new app? Uh, definitely. It's, it's a sweeping. It's basically a street uh, cleaning reminder app. Mm-hmm. So it helps you. Um, you it, it reminds you when to move your car so that you can avoid uh, the, the street cleaning tickets. Ah. So, you know, so, so yeah, so like, you know, most major cities have street cleaning schedules and those boards just posted on, on, on the road. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you've left your car along for many days at a stretch, you know, you may not, re- you may not remember when the street cleaning was supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. So this app will simply, you know, remind you, uh, uh, you know, when the street cleaning will happen, like a day before, or a few hours before, whatever you want to, whatever notification period you want to give it mm-hmm. based on where you parked your car. Oh, great. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so finally, um, do you have any advice for anyone out there who is thinking about creating their first app? Uh, yeah, so I think you have to think about, uh, besides, you know, think most most people who are thinking of apps think of the designing and developing of the app, but I, but I would advise people to have a marketing plan for the app. Mm-hmm. That's something I did not have when I, when I was developing Phrase Pop. Since I know how to develop myself, I kind of just, you know, Went went at it head first. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would re- recommend people to definitely use Sensor Tower for keyword optimization. Mm-hmm. I think that helps a lot. Mm-hmm. And I would say if you're if you're actually developing your app yourself versus outsourcing it, uh, you know, start with something small so it's easier to manage mm-hmm. and you know, kind of get it out to the customers out the door as quick as you can. Get try to get feedback and build on that slowly. You know, versus trying to, uh, you know, spend six or eight months trying to create something and which people may not want. And mm-hmm. if you're doing this on the side, you know, it really it really takes its toll on you because you have a day job and you're doing something else, mm-hmm. uh, you know. So uh, start, you know, get it get it in front of the customers as soon as you can. Mm-hmm. Kind of that MV- MVP minimum viable this, product. Okay. Definitely, yes. Yeah. Cool, very cool. Well, thank you very much for sitting down with us, Varun. I, I know you're busy, you have a day job and you also have to work around this, but... um. We wish you continued success. And um, if people want to find out more about you or Phrase Pop, where can they go? Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, you, they can find me, you know, for Phrase Pop, you can go to phrasepopapp.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, just just one word, everything. And to find out more about me, really, I'm, you know, uh, I, I'm a big tweeter. So you can find me on Twitter at uh, G-O-E-L-V, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, what was that blog? Where, uh, what was that site that you blog at? I blog at uh, builtinchicago.org. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I can send you those those couple of links um, over email um, if you want. Yeah, sure. And then yeah. I'll I'll, put, I'll stick that into the notes at the bottom of this um, interview. Um, okay. Well, thank you very much again, and we wish you continued success. Thanks, Hugh. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to interview with uh, Sunset Hour. My pleasure. Take care. Yeah. Take care.